Jeff Jennings of Missouri S&T, is my guest on this episode of the podcast. My name is Vicki Maris. Thank you so much for being here. Let's get started. You're listening to Agile Digital Business with host Vicki Maris. She's an author, speaker, and marketer, helping you with your business transition to digital in content marketing and customer engagement. This episode is one of the original episodes of the show when it was called Online Course Connections. I have been rebranding the show to the name Agile Digital Business, but I've taken several of these evergreen episodes and have wrapped them with new front ends and sometimes a new back end so that they would still be here for your reference. This particular episode, I have a conversation with my colleague, Jeff Jennings, whom I met during the OLC Accelerate Conference down in Orlando. I have a few more episodes coming after this one that will experience that same kind of rebranding. And then I'm going to launch in to the new series of episodes about voice search marketing and things related to that topic. I've been spending a lot of time in that particular topic as I have been giving talks on voice search marketing in the executive education classroom, and it has continued to fascinate me. This trend is moving so fast across our globe, and I do not want any of us as marketers or content creators or authors of books, I I don't want us to miss out on the things that we can be doing to prepare our content so that it can be found in that type of a search by our customer. Thanks again for hanging out with me. I appreciate your time and love that you are interested in these same topics that I have so much passion about. Let's get going with the conversation that I had with Jeff. Online Course Connections is a podcast hosted by online course designer Vicki Maris. She's passionate about improving online experiences and helping people connect in the online environment. Vicki's about to bring you an interview with a pro in the world of online courses. Stay tuned for what's up next. Vicky has another great e-course conversation ready to share. Stay tuned for online course connections. Well, hello, everybody. I am in the studio today with Jeff Jennings. Jeff and I met during a pre-conference workshop at the OLC Accelerate Conference in 2016 in Orlando. Welcome to the show, Jeff. Thanks for having me, Vicki. I appreciate it. Oh, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this interview. I had the opportunity to attend a pre-conference workshop at the OLC Accelerate Conference in Orlando in 2016, and Jeff was a co-presenter with his colleague Amy Skiles, and they were teaching a building blocks workshop about course design. In this interview, we will go into details about that process and how it has become a program on his campus, and I think you'll find tools within this conversation that you'll be able to use in your own course design or programs that you would like to improve. So Jeff, would you start out by giving my listeners background about yourself and what brought you to the world of online course design and e-learning? Okay. Um, So I have um, a bachelor's degree in education. I taught middle school for several years. um, And then um, in the 90s, or correction, in the 2000, late 2000, like seven or eight, I went back and got my master's degree in educational leadership, um, which talked about um, the new um, tools that were coming in online for and I was uh, for education, and I was really focused on K-12. Um, 
but I was still in the military and retired from the military in 2011 and um, came to campus um, at the uh, Missouri University of Science and Technology here in Rolla, Missouri. And uh, from there, got my first taste of what higher ed is all about. And I recently was promoted to instructional designer. And from there, we've sort of um, branched and are really trying to focus our attention on um, getting courses aligned with uh, the building blocks that we're going to talk about here in a minute. But um, I really feel that if you can align your um, student learning outcomes or objectives, whichever term you want to use, with the learning activities or events that we call them, and assessments, then you will have a better course uh, to engage students uh, with more active learning type stuff, um, and everything is aligned. Um, so that's where we came to, and we came and we built this um, Building Blocks workshop that really works best on our campus. And um, there's other workshops out there that you can do online, but it seemed to work better for us to actually just do a workshop with a hands-on approach here on our campus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Boy, you've mentioned several things that I would love to circle back around to. In okay. Not all at the same time, obviously, but uh, first of all, I want to thank you for your service to our country in the military. What, which branch of the service were you in, Jeff? I was in the um, United States Army uh, for 31 years. Oh, wow. Well, thank you for that. You're welcome. So did you say that you were doing part of your master's degree while you were still in the military? Yes. So I took my master's degree online. Uh, the whole program was online through uh, what is now Trident University. At the point I took my master's, it was called Turo University International out of California. And I did that, you know, at night, um, like early in the mornings uh, because I had two children and I had to kind of balance my military life and school all at the same time. And so... Um, I got it done in, you know, several years, and so it, it's really paid off, and I appreciate the opportunities. I, maybe sometime in the future, if you're willing, we could come back and do another interview about that. I'd love to just swap e-learning experiences sure. in master's degrees. Sure, yeah. I, too, uh, did part of my master's degree online and part on campus, but gained so many benefits from being able to access courses while I was traveling or, you know, just not in a traditional classroom kind of setting. Right, right. I, that, I would be interested to hear your take on that as well. But for this interview, why don't we go ahead and <laughs> okay. jump into the, uh, the blueprint that you, uh, you and Amy were using during that workshop. I, it's just a really great tool, especially for someone who's brand new to course design. But I also could see it being used by an instructor or someone who is more seasoned in teaching, but maybe wants to take a fresh look at their syllabus. Are, do you guys use that both ways on your campus? Yes. Um, so what we initially do, uh, we, the process that we take our faculty through or instructors, it could be an adjunct or tenured um is that we take a look at their course description that we have in our um, – ours is particular is called Joe's. And um, what this, this is what the student sees uh, initially for the course. Mm -hmm. And so we take them through that and to look at it um, and make sure that it's covering everything that they want or th that the course is actually taught. Um, what we have found is that in some cases, um, the course description hasn't been touched for many years, and so it needs to be refreshed and, and revisited. And so as we take them through the building blocks process, after the course description, we go into um, – 
student, uh, um, we, we go into the assessments. Uh, we start there because uh, most instructors already have ideas of and are using some assessments. They may not really understand what the assessments are. As, I mean, they're familiar with the midterm and the final exams, but they also may have quizzes. Um, on our campus, we use uh, clickers. Mm -hmm. um, student response devices is, is really the name. It can be anything, but in our campus, we use clickers. Um, that is also a, some type of assessment that can be used. And then once we have gone through the assessments and they've written those down, then we talk about student learning or uh, correction. So prior to the assessments, we talk about goals. So we talk about the goals that tie back to the course description. And we ask them, what is it that you want your students to remember uh, in five years. So if you were to, if they were to take your course and in five years, what is it that you want them to remember? And it's those things that are really important uh, for the students to take away from the course. There's a couple reasons for that. One is the students aren't going to always remember everything. And it may be just that your course or the course we're redesigning leads into another course. And it may be that that course that you're teaching goes to that, and that's just that information that you want to have them remember. But at the end of their degree program, what is it that they are going to take to industry and remember and use? And that's what we try to hone in on uh, with the course goals. Then I'll get back to the assessments that we've already talked about. Um, and then once we do assessments, then we look at and we talk about student learning outcomes or objectives, however, whatever terminology you want to use. There, we use both. Um, and then how, what is it exactly that the student is going to do to reach those goals in the course? Um, and that, and we talk about how to define what a student learning outcome or objective is, how to create them, how to focus that. And then we also, and as we did in the pre-conference, we talked about Bloom's Taxonomy and also uh, Depth of Knowledge, DOK. And then at what level of higher thinking do you want the students to gain from that objective or outcome at what level of thinking so like for instance in a introductory course uh, we have chemistry I'm going to use that as an example some of the things that you may want them to do is there's a lot of terminology that they're going to have to sort of remember and it may be just at the lower level that they have to recall be able to recognize so on and so forth but as they progress into mechanical engineering or chemical engineering they need to be able to analyze and explain and even maybe uh, conduct experiments using that knowledge that they had initially from that introductory course. I'd like to break in here in the content for just a moment and let you know about the hashtag Agile Digital Biz. When you use that hashtag in your tweet or posts, that's a way that we can stay connected around this particular topic. I search on that hashtag fairly frequently and look for things that I can retweet or share or comment on if you had something that you wanted to ask a question about or if it sparked an idea that you want to share. I would love for you to include that hashtag as you are tweeting or posting in your social media channels. Another thing that you can do is take a screenshot of this episode and share it in your social media channels and then include the hashtag or at mention me. If we're talking about Twitter, it's at Vicki Maris. That's also my handle in Periscope and in Instagram. If we're out in Facebook, my business page in Facebook is VJ Maris. Facebook.com forward slash VJ Maris. All right, let's get back to my conversation with Jeff Jennings. So, 
so then what we do is we take and we try to t discuss learning events or uh, in the pre-conference it came out that one university calls, calls them learning activities. And so that is that bridge between the student learning outcomes and objectives to the assessments. And you don't want to, what we emphasize is to faculty to make sure that they are, that learning event or activity is at the same level that you're going to assess. Meaning that you don't want to practice, and then we call that deliberate practice, um, taken from um, teaching STEM, teaching and learning STEM book from Dr. Uh, Felder um, and his wife, um, uh, Rebecca Brent. They talk in there about um, transitioning or scaffolding that deliberate practice to what you're going to assess. Um, we had a case on our campus uh, with a new instructor. Um, she was basically practicing at a lower level, but then her exams or her assessments were at a higher level of thinking, but she never bridged the, the, the transition from one to the other, and students uh, didn't do so well on the exam. And then when we reanalyzed it and looked at it, um, we determined that that was what part of the issue was, is she was hoping they would make that transition, but she had never taught or showed, explained that that's where she wanted students to go. Um, and so we try to align all of that together uh, to, to make a better course for the student's um, experience. Okay, and I have a blueprint in front of me, which it's a small version, I think, of what you use when you're in a conference room or yes. wherever you're doing your design work with an instructor. And let me just describe it the best I can, and then we'll also make a link to it available in the show notes for everybody. This looks like something, do you have it as a, like on a big flip chart? Is it that large? Yes. When you're actually... Right. Okay. And, and what we, uh, on the blueprint, we use sticky notes okay. uh, and they write down their goals um, and then their student learning outcomes and events and then their assessments so that they can move those depending on, you know, if they're looking at the sequence of their, what they're teaching. Uh, and we have had faculty actually, you know, have the aha moment that they were teaching something um, or a correction, they were assessing something that they hadn't even taught yet. Mm -hmm. And so they, you know, took the sticky note and moved it so that it aligned up. And that was, that was what we're trying to get out of the whole building blocks workshop. Do you ever find that faculty discover they have too much content in their course? Do they ever like break it into a 101 and a 102, so to speak? <laughs> Um, we have had uh, we have an economics uh, faculty member that is looking at doing that um, because of the material that they want to cover for their degree program, mm -hmm. um, and so she's in the process of you know doing the necessary groundwork for the second phase or uh, the the. I guess it would be an advanced economics course mm -hmm. um, to take it further uh, for their degree program. I run into that sometimes when I'm talking to people who are in an entrepreneurial setting and trying to create a an online course, and they maybe are new to that experience. Or also I've seen it with membership sites where they just are packed so full of content that it distracts people you know it's hard to keep them heading down the path towards that outcome and I think a tool like this could help whether you're teaching in a classroom or you're working with a professional society and creating a certificate course or you know something beyond the more traditional means of a course right very interesting I want to take a quick break here to let you know what's coming in the next episode of Online Course Connections. 
My part two of the interview with Whitney Kilgore will be the next episode. If you aren't already subscribed to the show, please do that so that you will automatically get it added to your podcast player. And I do thank you for sharing this episode with Jeff Jennings and any of the other episodes with your friends. It helps me get the word out about the show, and I'm just excited for more and more people to get fired up about online course design and creation and about being e-learners and lifelong learners. So thank you for helping me spread the word about the show, for sharing the episode, and look forward now to that part two interview with Whitney Kilgore. But for now, let's go back to my conversation with Jeff Jennings. Here we go. You had mentioned to me in our uh, conversation ahead of the recording that you have customized this tool from uh, University of Central Florida. Was that what you – did I get the location right? Yes. Um, so when we um, – we are – my department – basically was created back in 2007 and we've slowly gained a, a, a you know momentum with the redesigning of courses uh about i would say three or four years ago they tried to do uh the same type of um thing uh building blocks for faculty members but it was mostly f online and that we, we found that it, that didn't work. Um, it just was time, consu time consuming and it just it, it, with all the priorities going on, it sort of just that, that was the last thing that faculty members had time to do. So um, about two years ago, um, we are about a year and a half ago. We talked about doing this again, only making it into a workshop so that faculty members come to us uh, in one location. They bring their materials, syllabus, uh, textbook or whatever materials they're using for their content. Um, and they sit down and they work with us and also f other faculty members uh, to go through this building block workshop. And basically it gives them five hours to kind of look at it and start, you know, aligning and really looking and analyzing all that material. Is that really what they want? Or is, you know, like you mentioned, can they take some stuff out? That's why we hit on, you know, what is really important for the students to, uh, to, to learn. So mm -hmm. did that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Okay. And I, I'm just guessing if I was a fly on the wall in that room that they probably uh, gain from one that concentrated effort where you mentioned it was a five hour time block and they they're going in and they're working on it and getting it done. But I bet they get a lot from getting to interact with their colleagues. And I felt that in that pre-conference workshop that you were leading lots of ideas going about the room that kind of spur your enthusiasm about your own project. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, that would, that workshop was really good because we had, we had people from that workshop all over the world. We had a, a person from Indonesia, um, uh, yourself with a colleague. Um, we had somebody from, I think the, the East coast or the West coast. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, it was great to see and hear different ideas from, you know, around the world and, it, for us as as designers, we you know walked away with uh, you know we're not the only ones that are doing this or has this need. I mean, it's across the whole gamut of academia to to make sure that courses are aligned. Um, and since that since that conference, uh, Amy and I have come back and we have uh, sort of. We looked at the building blocks workshop. We've uh, tweaked some things. And now on our campus, we're expanding that. So the building blocks workshop that you attended was basically for a course, specific course. Mm -hmm. We've now sort of expanded that to um, a whole program and to align several courses. And we've done this with our um, – chemical engineering department here on campus uh, recently. 
and we're working with two or three other departments here in the near future to do the exact same thing. So now we're looking at a more of a, a program approach. Um, and then I think our next step with Amy included will be to how to align the, the lecture aspect of a class and the labs, which she is more uh, specialized in on the online labs and, and experiential learning. Mm -hmm. So we're going to tie those together here in the future, probably in this new coming year. So we're excited. That's wonderful. I'm such a big proponent of repurposing content. And it was very interesting to hear how you started with your what you were doing on your campus and you've created the workshop that you delivered at the conference and now that's building into a bigger program back at your campus. That's a great use of time. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, Jeff, I do you have anything else that you would like to add as we wrap up the interview? Um, I think you know, the like I've said before, the whole Building Blocks workshop started with, um, you know, how can how can we help faculty members uh, on our in particular on our campus because they don't have a lot of time to to uh, focus specifically on teaching and learning. I mean, there's we have uh, faculty members that are, you know, in research and they have other obligations. And so we're trying to help them uh, help students. I mean, the best we can do uh, better the student engagement and the, the, the whole learning environment here on our campus. And so far, um, it, it's looking promising, and, and we're excited for uh, going into 2017 and these other programs that we're going to try to uh, improve and work on as we move forward. So I think that would be it. It is really delightful to me that I have been able to capture what you are doing through these interviews with you and also with Amy and hopefully others can hear and snag some of these ideas to use on their own campus or the resources that we share in the show notes. So I thank you very much for your willingness to do the workshop and to also then come back and share in the interview. Sure. Um, I will, um, if it's okay, uh, give my email address if anyone wants to... Um, reach out and yes um okay jennings j-e so that's j-e-n-n-i-n-g-s j-e at m-s-t dot e-d-u and that's my email address okay and then our uh our um educational technology website that we use that has our resources that you're going to provide is uh edtech dot m-s-t dot e-d-u and that's our main website well jeff Thanks very much. I really appreciate you being here on Online Course Connections. Awesome. Thanks, Vicki. If you're looking for a way to say thank you to Vicki for her efforts in producing and hosting Online Course Connections, consider leaving a five-star rating and review for the show in iTunes. Or you can visit her page on Patreon and become a patron sponsor of the show at any level that feels right for you. Check out patreon.com forward slash Vicky Maris for more.